We are starting off with uh, Mr. Vincent Caggiano, Vinny to his friends and to his mom. Um, we're starting off in a little new direction here because he's been playing guitar seriously for around 73 years. He started when he was eight. When you ask him what keeps him young, he goes, guitar. So, uh, what we're doing, uh, we're starting a brand new series that's going to focus on guitar and the way one can use it to uh, help in songwriting. Right. So here we go. All right, so what we're going to talk about is harmony, okay? Um, uh, so there's, obviously there's a million ways to skin a cat when it comes to writing a song. You can approach it from lyrics, from a melody line that comes up, a hook that, you know, some sort of phrase that sounds like a great title, turn that into a melody. You can start with a bunch of chords that sound good and build your melodies over that, etc., etc. We're going to deal with chords, okay? That, that approach. And uh, we're going to be discussing something called the chord family template, okay? And what that is, is basically if you're in a particular key, uh, uh, basically it's the six usable chords within a key, all right? And what this does is it greatly streamlines, rather than hunting and pecking for chords, what this does is it greatly streamlines the process of chord choice. Because if you're only choosing between six instead of like 1,500 uh, chords on the guitar that you don't know how they're going to sound connect to other chords, blah, 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 it becomes a long process of hunting and pecking. After that, I'm going to give examples of uh, songs that use uh, this chord family template frequently and uh, to really drive home the fact that there's no such thing as a copyright on a chord progression. Chord progressions are limited and finite, so... Um, uh, Nor on a song title, is that... I, you, you can call I think you, you can call something Stardust, but by God, it better be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're gonna mess, you know, the name of some great songwriter song, you better have a good song. Hey Jude. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is my song. Hey Jude. Be an uphill. Hey Jude. <laughs> be a little bit of an uphill battle. Yeah. All right. So, in order to work with the chord family template, the, the first there are a couple of things you need to know. Well, let's start talking about harmony before anything else. There are two studies of harmony in music, vertical and horizontal. What we're going to be discussing is horizontal. Uh, horizontal means you have chord A, chord B, and chord C. These are hypothetical chords. And uh, the concept here um, is, uh, is we're uh, Basically, it's analysis of how chords move in time with each other, how they connect, how they relate to each other, okay? That's, that's horizontal because it's moving in time. The chords are moving in time. There's this chord, this chord, this chord in sequence, okay? Uh, vertical harmony, it, it has to do with one chord and the analysis of how it's structured. Uh, in other words, you could have a G chord. Chords are built in thirds, okay? So, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. Uh, that's a basic triad, Do, Mi, Sol. You can add other elements, other thirds on top of that. So, like, for example, if I have C, F, and G major chords, I could extend the C, so I, instead of just having the three notes C, E, and G, I'm adding another, dropping another third on top. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. So that's the seventh note of the scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So we're going to add a B to the C, and how we're going to add is by subtracting. I'm going to remove my finger to allow for the B string to happen. This is C major 7. All right. The same thing for the F chord, uh, F, A, C, right? Uh, so it's F, G, A, B, C, D, E would be the next third. And I'm making F major 7 out of this. Then I'm taking my G7. Uh, I'll make it a G7. And I'm going to make it a ninth chord, okay? And that's uh, G7 is G, B, D, F. I'm going to drop another third on top, F, G, A. So if I add an A to this chord, here's one way to do it. But it, it doesn't really sound to my liking. I'm using a uh, more jazz form. All right, so where we first had a chord progression that goes C, F, G, now we have C major 7, F major 7, and G13. Now, bear in mind, these funk chords function the same way as the original ones do, okay? They're just more colorful, all right? So if I have a melody... Or let's, let's add a note to that. All right? Uh, now, 
now I'm going to do it with my extended chords. They function the same way, they're just more cushy, okay? Now what I did was I combined both principles, I combined vertical and horizontal because we're dealing with chord movement, C going to F going to G, and, and we're dealing with vertical by extending those chords out. So there are two ways you deal with harmony. Today we're dealing with horizontal. So the first thing we're going to do, we need to have, is um, how to, do you have a, any questions before I go on? Is vertical, like when you look at printed music, uh, and you see a chord, like on a, on, a, that, on a staff. I mean, that is a vertical Literally stacking. vertical, right, the way you stack it. Okay. Like on a staff, you see C, E, and G going on. Right. That is, is and in fact, if you say you had a number of chords, one after the other, right, uh, on staff, vertical, you would take one chord, isolate, and see the elements of it. Okay. Right? Horizontal would be, okay, C is moving to D minor to G7. Okay. Uh, does, uh, do these belong to the same key? Is that why they sound good? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Right? Good. So we're just we're not going to deal with chord extension, which is vertical. Okay, okay. we're going to deal with horizontal because um, uh, you know the, the colorization process is something a little more advanced, but you know we can eventually get into it. So in order to understand to get to the chord family template, there are two things you need to know. One is how to build a key, so you have the notes of the key, so then you can derive the chords. All right. The second thing you have to know is the names of the notes on the E and A strings of the guitar, the sixth and fifth strings. Now, this all starts with something called the whole step, half step formula, all right, which is uh, at the, uh, down here we see a WWH, WWWH, right? All right, that means whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. To exemplify that on the instrument, if I play a scale on the guitar on one string, you could see the distances. The distance of two frets okay. is considered a whole step. The distance of, well, how do I say this? This is adjacent frets is a half step. Okay. All right, so if I do a do, re, mi scale, you'll notice that it, com it combines whole steps and half steps. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. We apply that to any note on the guitar, we'll get a key. In other words, if I start on this F note, I'll get whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Now, if I know the names of these notes, then I have the key. Okay. In the case of this one on G, I have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. In the case of this one, I have F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. All right. Okay. So we need to establish the notes of a key. I have a, a handy little system for establishing those notes. So we're going to start there. All right, so what we have here, the, there are three steps to building a key. I, right now I have ostensibly two possible keys we're going to build, the key of C and the key of D. Okay. Step one, whatever key it is that you want to build, all right, just go in the musical alphabet order. Now the musical alphabet order is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, all right? You can start on any one of those notes depending on the key you want to build. So let's say uh, we want to build the key of C. The rule is go up the alphabet till you reach that C note again. So I'm going C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Right. In the, in the case of building the key of D, we would go from D to D, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. Now as that stands, both of these scales right now are C scales. All right, even though this one starts with D and that starts with C, the fact of the matter is they contain the same seven notes. There are no sharps or flats. Okay. So this means both of these are derived from the key of C. But we want to build the key of D, which is different than the key of C. Right. right now they're the same. So step one, build the musical alphabet from your beginning note to your end note to reach the same end note as your be beginning note. All right. Step two, draw the whole step, half step formula underneath your scale. Right. Right. So we have whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. In the case of D, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Same thing, right? Right. Now this requires that you understand what a sharp or a flat is, by the way, too. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll talk about that real quickly. You know, uh, to make a, a sharp or a flat is any note that stands in between any of these notes. Okay, okay? so um, if I the note in between C and D is either C sharp or D flat, they're the same exact note. There's a term enharmonic, which means uh, different names for the same thing. All right. So if we lower the D one half step, we get uh, D flat. If we raise the C a half step, we get C sharp. Right. Oh, okay, girls. <laughs> yeah. All right, so <laughs> that's embarrassing. 
Okay, so um, in any case, uh, da, 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 da. we were down on the C. Right, okay, so are we making sense so far? Yeah. The whole step, half step formula is basically the white keys on the piano when you start on C. When you get Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, it goes in the order whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step like that. Yeah. All right. So sharps and flats now um, are the notes in between any of what are called the natural notes. The natural notes are A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Right. All right. Anything in between those will be a sharp or a flat. You could have two names for a sharp or a flat. C sharp and D flat are the same thing. Right. If I were to do this on a piano, you would be able to see that. Okay. All right. Now, so the second step is lay the whole step, half step formula between the notes underneath. Okay. All right, easy enough. So W W H W W W H. Now next step, make this conform to that whole step half step formula. So you have to ask yourself, is C to D a whole step? Yes, it, it normally is a whole step. Uh, by the way, the whole step half step formula is derived right off the key of C. What's happening here is nothing is going to change because there's naturally a half step between E and F here, and there's naturally a half step between B and C, and all these other whole steps conform quite nicely. Right. So we have, from C to D is a whole step, from D to D is a whole step, from E to F is a half step, from F to G is a whole step, from G to A is a whole step, from A to B is a whole step, and from B to C is a half step. But when we apply this to a different uh, starter note, you're going to have changes now. D to E is normally a whole step. E to, e to F is a half step. Normally a half. We have to make it conform into being a whole step. All right? So how would I stretch the distance well, between F D and F? Yeah. Now, since F sharp and G flat, G flat are the same notes, and in terms of literally the same tone, why am I co not calling it a G well, flat? Well, because you're, you're, you're going to use all the letters right. in the scale. And there should be no redundancies. Right. Right? So instead of D, E, G flat, G, that'd give us two types of G, a flat G and a regular G. Right. And there's no kind of F in this formula, so you must contain all seven notes of the musical alphabet. So that's why we have to call this F sharp. Now when we raise, uh, normally E to F is a half step. When we raise this to F sharp, what we're doing is we're bringing this closer to G, which now makes us naturally fall into being a half step. So we call this F sharp, all right? Right. And here's my big test on whether I could draw upside down. So D, E, F sharp, and right. we have our half step here. D, E, F sharp, G, now we have a half step. G to A is normally a whole step. Whole step. A to B is normally a whole step. Right. B to C it's is normally a half, a half so right. we have to go to C sharp. We have to go to C sharp. And for the same reason we didn't call this G flat, we're not calling that it's D, D flat. flat. Right. Okay. So this is what's called a sharp key. Okay. Um, now, when you're dealing with the sharp keys, the sharp keys are G, D, A, E, B, and F sharp. Note that the last sharp key, F sharp, is the only one that has the sharp after the, the letter. Okay. Okay. So when you're dealing with a key like F sharp, what you have to do is uh, the same rules. You go F sharp, then you go G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. <laughs> okay. And you put your whole step, half step formula, follow the same process. Right. Now, the, the deal here, though, is that the flat keys, as soon as you get past the first flat key, which is F, you get a flat in the name, all right? You get a B, the key of B flat, the key of E flat. And again, the rule is like this. If I want to use this technique for finding the notes of a key, right. I go E flat, and then I build the rest of the alphabet. F, G, A, B, C, D, E flat. This is not the key of E flat yet. We have to make it conform. So we use our whole step, half step formula underneath. It helps to draw these carrots so you can see yeah. clearly. So whole, whole, half. Whole, 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 half. And that's, uh, let me make that clear. I'm realizing that the other camera isn't getting this, so. Yeah. All right. So now, E flat to F. E to F normally is a half step. We're, we're pulling the E flat back, so now it's be already become a whole step. That's fine. That's okay. sitting. E flat to F is a whole step. F to G is a whole step. Uh, G to A is not a half step. Right. So we're going to have to make a G sharp. Uh, we're going to have to make a G sharp. So E flat, F, G sharp, A. But what happens? When I make this a G sharp, suddenly there's a bigger distance between F and G, and that ruins this whole step. It does. All right. 
So what's the other option? Well, we make a flat. E flat, F, G. Remember, G flat, and a, uh, G sharp, and A flat are the right. same note. All right. If we make this A flat, then the relationship between G and F remains the same. This becomes a half step, and um, A flat to B is a large interval. Right. All so right. So it's going to have to be a B flat. It's going to have to be a B flat, and then B to C is normally a half step. When it becomes B flat, it so becomes a natural whole step. So we have an A flat. We have an E flat, F G, A flat, B flat. C, D, all right, B flat to C is a whole step, whole step. C to D is a whole step, D to then E flat is a half step, Okay. all right? Right. So you got to be wary when you do this, but the real, the real clue is that when you start with the flat name, there's no key that has both sharps and flats in it, so you have to proceed with the flat. Right, right, right. Okay? Yeah. So, all right, now we know how to build a key, now we could work with the template. I think right now we should probably, and uh, I can wipe the board and... Okay, and then we will move on to step two, the court yeah. family template. Now, do you have any questions? Uh, no, not so far. So far, okay, good and clear. A little right. carrot, no, there's a bunch of like good ideas here, reminders, use the little carrot things and to set it up this way. Good.